Welcome to Kanpai Planet. I'm Mac. I've lived in Japan for 15 years and I'm about to embark on one of the biggest adventures of my life. I'm going to spend one week making Japanese sake and I'm doing it on one of the most magical islands in the Japanese archipelago, Sado. Join me on this special journey into the heart of Japanese culture. It's day six now and just reflecting on this incredible week. I mean, absolutely unbelievable. So much fun and I've learned so much about the amazing process of making Japanese sake. We begin like other days, shoveling rice out of the koshiki. Then cooling it. Glasses and steamed rice don't mix. This is the 193 kilograms that we washed yesterday. There are two main goals of day six. First, adding the nakazoe to the fermentation tank. This is the second edition of Korgi, chilled water, then steamed rice. Second, washing the rice that needs to be steamed tomorrow for the tomezoe, which is the third and final edition of the Sandang Jikomi happening on day seven. The guys are prepping to transfer cool water from this tank to the Shikomi tank. They've just stuck the roller in the tank and figured out that there's 784 millimeters of water left. So the Torji has just gone off to calculate how much more he needs to put back in the tank. This water is chilled to around one or two degrees Celsius and is being fed from the cooling tank into the shikomi tank. The tank already contains the yeast starter and the Hatsuzoa mix. When it comes to cooling steamed rice, like the cleaning of a house, it never ends. <laughs> Hi ho, hi ho, it's off to the fridge we go to fetch the koji for the nakazawa. Dum, dum, dum. Koji is that all important ingredient. The steamed rice we inoculated with koji mold spores on day one. The mold breaks down starch into the sugars essential for fermentation to make sake and dozens of other things like soy sauce, miso, mirin, all central to Japan's culinary traditions. In fact, it's so important, it's been designated the national mold of Japan. Every grain of this koji is precious, so it would be disastrous if we trip or lose our grip. Nerve-wracking stuff. We've just added the koji, and now it's time for some kairi. So that's inside the tank right now. So at the bottom, you can feel the settled rice solids and above it, the milky liquid. And I'm just trying to invigorate things. We still need to keep cooling all this kakemai the steamed rice for today's second addition to the mash. So Tomoyuki tells us to take some of it to the big refrigerator. <laughs> the 
I also want to cool down, so I managed to wrangle a frig shift. Bit tougher to work on the floor. I was curious why they only brought half the rice in here. The toji and the kurabito are very reactive to even the smallest changes in the environment. I came into this knowing a lot of Saka theory, but this experience is giving me a whole new level of understanding about how the washing, soaking, steaming, and koji making happen concurrently to bring all the mash ingredients together in the sandangji komi. Now for the toughest part of the week. Okay, okay. Team Ichiban, Sugoi, Subarashi. Coming up with a team name. After a few minutes of next level brainstorming, we collectively come up with a great name. What about the dragon? Lighting dragon. Lighting dragon. Rising Dragons. Okay. Inspired by the amazing Iwakubi Shoryu Tanada rice fields we visited on day four. And it's been an honor to spend the last week making the best sake in the world with them. It's time to add the Nakazoa Kakemai, the second edition of steamed rice. There's 193 kilograms. That's all the rice in this room, plus some we put in the fridge earlier. The Nakazoa edition is about 30% of the total volume, bringing the mash level to about halfway in the tank. Six days in, we're all much more confident rice ferriers, but not complacent. Rice is a Saka brewery's currency, and we're all well aware of the responsibility to get our precious cargo where it needs to go. There's no rush. Okay, we've got the final batch in the fridge, so back off there. All of the steam dries for the Nakazoa has gone in the tank. We're just giving it a good stir around. You can really feel the hardness that comes from the addition of this rice. This tank is like the TARDIS. Despite adding all that rice from the top, it doesn't seem like we've done much at all. Nailed it. And of course, that now means there's a lot of mesh to clean. Like the Sakabukuro, I've come to love cleaning this Hessian too. A classic case of Stockholm Syndrome. A little bit of rice there. And it's gone. You know, all this hiking may seem like overkill, but the biggest fear for the Torji and his team 
is that there's contamination in the bat from external bacteria. So that's what this is all about. I want another crack at siphoning the water out of the tub. The water then. This seems a pretty useful life skill to master. Yes. I'm not the only one who's absolutely knackered. It's a hard life being a grabito. Oh, yes, Sumi. After a far too brief snooze, we have a great opportunity to get all our questions answered by the top execs from Orbata Shizor over an organic Sado Island farm-to-table bento lunch. Ooh, this looks delicious. Gakogura school principal, Hiroshima-san, explains why steaming is necessary and how it alters the molecular structure of the rice starch. Well-fed and much more well-informed, we're back in the main room for more rice washing. We're prepping 274 kilograms. We're washing the rice that's going to be steamed tomorrow and then put in the tank as part of the Tomezoe, the third edition in the Sandang Jikomi. This is called the Tomekake. It's the biggest volume of rice so far so we're gonna be here a while. Each batch weighs approximately 10 kilos and we wash it for precisely one minute. After we wash the rice, we soak it for 12 minutes until it absorbs the optimal amount of water. Tolji Nakano says the optimal amount of absorption is about 30% of a grain's mass. Everything's timed to the second. We hold the soaked rice for exactly one minute, and it's now 30% heavier. Washing acts as a secondary polishing process because grains vigorously rub against each other which removes about one more percent from their surface. This rice washing machine uses pressurized water to thoroughly wash each grain, removing any particles of bran or nuka left over from the polishing process. How the effluent is jettisoned after each round of washing. Toji Nakano passes the baton to Tomoyuki and he checks the water absorption levels. He's got the makings of a great Toji, has our Tomoyuki. I feel quite emotional because these are the last bags of rice we'll be soaking on this course. Right. Ten seconds to go. We're a well-oiled sake-making machine now. It's thirsty work and I'm absolutely parched. Good job Obata-san has us covered with a session of sake tasting. Tasting time. So we've been asked to write a wish here, but what should I wish for? It's gotta be world peace. Anything less than that just seems very trivial. Obata-san explains what we're aiming to learn from this exercise. 
目の前にあるこちらのキキチョコです、うん、こちらが1号入ります、うん、今日の授業で行うことは5種類のお酒を聞き分けてみようというものです So we're playing a little game here where we have to identify the sake through its characteristics, the appearance, the aroma, and the palate. 最後の辛口タイプっていうものなんですが、あのお米というのは、でんぷんが糖に分解されてお酒になるので、基本は甘いんです。甘くないのが辛い酒です。うん、甘みが少ないお酒を探してください。We have to match the sake to its type. Aromatic, aged, light, rich, or dry. Lots of fun. Come back. Interesting. No, I, I need to have all of them. Then I can judge them, right? There are a number of intersecting frameworks for describing a sake's profile in a structured fashion. One traditional system is the gomi, or five tastes karami, nigami, shibumi, amami, and sanmi. Dryness, bitterness, astringency, sweetness, and acidity. I'm using these and other criteria such as umami, richness, and body to evaluate the sake. My ISO 9001 glass when I need it. So let's see how I did. Karaguchi. Yes, nailed it. <laughs> yes, all that money spent on the WSET was worth it. Three out of three. This is the greatest day of my life. Yep. And number four, I think it's Kaori type. Mm. It's the Dai Ginjo. It's the Kaori type. <laughs> Woo! One of the flagship Nihonshu brewed in order to extract maximum aroma. One hundred percent nailed it. One team this night. And the prize? A chance to try even more of Obata Shizo's exceptional sake. Yeah, I thought it was This sake is named after Obata-san's daughter, Miku. It's a Junmai Dai Ginjo, and it's delicious. We just wrapped up our tasting. I scored five out of five, but we don't need to dwell on that. The most important thing is that we all got to try nine different Obata shoes or sake. So now I know what our Gakko Gura efforts 
should be aspiring to. This is a very special sake. It's made with Yamada Nishiki rice, which is the most common sake rice. So what's so special about it? Well, it's Yamada Nishiki that's grown on Sado Island and the results are absolutely magnificent. So magnificent, in fact, that I can't leave Sado without it. So we head straight to the main brewery to take care of business. As I've drunk more and more sake, you know, Obata-san, one of the things I'm really interested in is not just sake, which is good, mm -hmm. but sake which expresses the brewer's intent. And this is one of those Nihon Shu that does that. Oh, thank you. It's absolutely fantastic. And it comes in a nice wooden box as well. So I'm going to buy one. Oh. Fantastic. Thank you very much. I'm going to enjoy this a lot by myself, shared with nobody else. <laughs> of course, that's no fun. To paraphrase, share happiness by sharing sake. I was feeling lucky. Obata Shizo have a Manotsuru original gacha, and you can win lots of prizes. And Obata San has just told me I'm guaranteed to win the number one prize. So I'm going to see if she's correct. Actually, Obata San said the exact opposite. She said, don't blame me if you don't get the number one prize. So let's see. Oh my goodness. Number one. This is the greatest day of my life <laughs> on Sado Island. <laughs> Number one desk. Tsuburashi. Oh, and I got a sticker as well. This is the Manotsuru Daiging Job. Kanpai. Speaking of Kanpai, what better way to enjoy the final evening than a team dinner? I'm going to miss these guys, but it's not over yet. We have our final day of sake making to come. That's a wrap on day six. Awesome doing the Nakazoe, and I'm feeling pretty flush with wins all round. Coming up on day seven, the culmination of the Sandang Jikomi, more intriguing flavors, and some well-earned rewards. Join us making sake on Sado.